My name is Paulette Lynch. I'm Executive Director of the Arts Council for Monterey County. And we are talking about music, music, music all day today um, because this is Youth Arts Education Month and we are preparing to restore music for every student in the county. And this is really, really important to all of us and we're gonna talk about why. My first guest today is Dr. Carl Christensen. And Carl, thank you so much for being here. Let me tell you just a little bit about Carl before we get underway. Carl was born in California. He attended University of Southern California and holds a Doctor of Musical Arts. He performed in Mexico for 10 years as principal trombone of the Orchestra of the State of Mexico, the Orchestra of the National Opera, and the Mexico City Philharmonic. He taught trombone at the Mexico Na Mexican National Conservatory of Music. Well, Carl's also been really, really active with us locally, and uh, we named him, the Arts Council named him as a champion of the arts. There is so much more to talk about with all the work that he has done, um, co-author and programmer of Foundations of Music, and uh, is outstanding graduate of the USC Wind Department, and teaching excellence awards from Hartnell College, outstanding music educator by the Central Coast section of the California Music Educators Association. We know that you know, and we're so glad that you're here to help <laughs> us to explore what's the value of music for people who like that sort of thing and well beyond. What do we need to do to uh, bring music back in a really big way, and why does it matter to everybody going forward? So Carl, tell us a little bit about your current role as, I understand you're both the managing director and the music director for Monterey County Pops. Yes, I, <clears throat> I taught music at Hartnell College for 31 years, or as I used to say, I tried to teach music because that my arrival coincided with a lot of cuts in music education in the, in the public right. schools. Yeah. Um, um, so I retired from that. I'm still active on certain committees and such over there. And then musically, I've uh, been involved with what we now call the Mount Airy County Pops for a long time, and, and now I'm the musical director and conductor, and then I'm also doing quite a bit in the management job, so I'm doing both. Uh, and we uh, are, have added to our mission of free public, con free public professional concerts all over the county uh, an attempt to serve underserved youth. So we have a kind of a unique um, approach we don't just play for the kids. Yeah. We invite them to be with us on the concert, and we, I work with them, and I come up with an arrangement to support them and make them sound good. So we've done this in King City, at the Alice House Center for the Fine Arts, and Golden State Theater, and uh, trying to support the youth in their study of music. Well, I've seen some of those performance, and they're riveting. And it's really incredible what you get out of the students I think you're with them in a short period, relatively short period yeah. of time, yet you get them into shape and they're really <laughs> eager to go and they do beautifully in your care. Thank you. I, you know, I, I've never liked the idea that we must expose youth <sighs> to the arts. Exposure, nobody ever learned anything. They don't get inspired. It's, it's doing, it's participation. Uh, our organization, Monterey County Pops, does not have the capabilities to provide year-round music education mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. students but what we've come up with is we do have the ability to, to give them a platform, a performance venue, and to work with them a little bit and to give them the opportunity to perform uh, backed up by professionals. And it, it's going very well. We're very excited about it. So we understand that, that you know, a lot of us feel like, okay, of course you're going to do that, right? Of course you're going to do what you can to incorporate the youth to do something. But for people who aren't there yet, who don't really understand, mm -hmm. take us into your boardroom. How, how is your board figuring that out, what, what was the spark for them that sure. felt like, we have to do this, we're going to do what we can? You know, a, a lot of us feel kind of guilty. We had wonderful experiences <laughs> as kids, and, yes. and I truly feel sort of guilty that this isn't happening now. Uh, we know about, is it Gardner, the seven intelligences, you know, that, that a human has, and there's a separate one for music, and it's been neglected in, in the K-12 system for a long time. It's sort of coming back, but it's, but it's spotty. Uh, evidently, the schools aren't required to teach music, so some school districts have very vibrant programs. Some have uh, a little more spotty efforts. Um, I think what motivates everybody is that music involves the whole person doing music uh -huh. more, almost more than anything else. It's one of the few things in school that involves the brain, the heart, and the body 
together cooperating to 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 make music and then you add to that the teamwork involved in working with other people the increased sense of self-esteem it's just a wonderful thing for kids we can't lock them in the room and have them do three hours of language arts in the morning it, it won't work i think it's been proven not to work you have to have these other things they're not just enrichment they are uh, awakening the brain, nurturing the brain in, in other ways that really complement. I think there's been study after study that uh, on the SAT test, people do better who've had arts. And in, in my case, what I know about is music. And yeah. the more music they've had, the better they do on those dreaded tests. That is definitely true. The neuroscientists are backing us up daily with new research on how all those yes. things go. Yes. But let's talk some more about the, the performance angle and when, when you go into um, places, talk, talk about what happens, like is that you that's going in or is it a, an instructor that you have? What's the actual partnership that you develop? And then ha take us all the way back to that when they join you in performance, what happens there? Yeah, it, it varies by the venue and the school. I mean, okay. we've been going to King City to do a Veterans Day concert for the last four years, I guess. Already. Huh? And, and I know people there because I used to take my groups from Hartnell down there. So that was pretty simple. There were pe people teaching in school or uh, doing school mu uh, after school m music with Soul Treasures. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so I call them the, call up the teachers. Uh, can you pick a melody that your kids are working on that'll be ready to go? Okay. Send me uh, the sheet music. Uh, we'll agree on the key, the yeah. uh, how many verses, et cetera, et cetera, and wow. then I'll make an arrangement of it. And so the idea is to reinforce what they're doing, not not to gallop into town and the That's Monterey County brilliant. Pops has a solution. But it also streamlines the whole process so you can, they're already one step ahead and you're taking them the next step ahead. Yeah, because uh, in all disciplines, students are being taught by their teachers. So to, for us to come in and do a workshop where we say, well, no, you should hold the clarinet this uh, way. Right. And yeah, yeah. that's counterproductive. Uh -huh. And, and it can get kind of bad, in my humble opinion, when, <laughs> when it's somebody famous who says, wow, they're teaching you to do it this way. That's wrong. You know? <laughs> and so we don't want to do that at all. I, I want to be in contact with those teachers to support them. So it's called the curriculum. You know, Music has a curriculum yeah. just like anything else. Mm -hmm. And we want to fit in and, in an appropriate place with the curriculum. Yeah. Um, now, in some places, it's a little more complicated. We did our first of what I hope will be many uh, residencies at the Alice Hall Center for the Fine Arts in East Salinas. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I got in touch with those people. I went out there to visit and, you know, and sort of explain what we were going to do. We weren't going to just come and lay a concert on them. Yeah, yeah. And we weren't going to just have them. It's very common that the host band, whatever it is, plays, and then the professionals play. We're not going to do that either. You know, we're going to play, and then we're going to invite you up on stage with us to do something that we've worked out together, we, and we've rehearsed some, but through the miracle of notation, you know, it, yeah. we're able to play together. So I, I went out there quite a few times and listened, and then got the, what we call lead sheets, the melody with the chord symbols, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for what they were playing. Uh, but most I just observed, and what they were doing and then I created an arrangement so we could play together. Wow. So we had them, we had the Rondaya, which is their guitar and singing group and their Latin jazz group. Yeah. And then we invited the Rondaya back again for our concerts that we, we called grat Concerts of Gratitude around Thanksgiving. So they came over to Seaside and also to North Salinas. So um, it, it involves working with them and uh, on the, uh, working with them on the curriculum that they're doing. So you're already doing so much in the community, and now you go forward and you're helping these groups and you're helping them to take their work to a new level. Mm -hmm. What actually drives you forward to extend yourself? You could kick back and you've done so much already. <laughs> Why do you keep going? How do you have two hats? What makes you, what, mm -hmm. what drives you personally? Well, what can I say? It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. It's fun. I mean, I like it. It's fun and it's rewarding. I mean, I like doing music. I to me, it's fun to to cook up an arrangement for the Monterey County Pops to play uh -huh. uh, that will that the kids can play with us. I, I do feel a little bit of this give back idea, uh -huh. but uh, but mostly it's just fun and it's rewarding. I mean, a, uh, putting together a concert, all the things that come together and then having it happen is a very, very rewarding experience. And so as a conductor, I get to kind of be the ringmaster and 
pull everything together. I love to watch you do that. It's <laughs> the most fun thing. But ever. it's all before, though. That's the thing. It's all before. I have to pick the music. Yes. I have to study. Yeah. I have to hire the players, etc. Let's talk about that. All the things that happened before. Mm -hmm. Even for people who love going to concerts and are really supportive and really, really. Um, enjoy the whole thing and they're going to pay their tickets, they're going to make a donation, they're going to do this and that. They don't always know, unless you're a parent with a kid who's practicing every day or, or you're a performer, you're practicing every day, you don't always, you're not always privy to all those little steps that go into it and how much work there is in that play. Can yeah. you talk about that, sure. the mastery that, that goes into being able to go from, oh this is very nice dear, to being able to perform on a stage with professionals no matter what your age. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, as I say, Monterey County Pops is all about free public professional concerts in Monterey County. Uh -huh. So the design of the concert is really important. What's the theme going to be? What's the music going to be? We have one rehearsal because we're trying to do this on a shoestring. <laughs> so I, I select the musicians. We have a kind of system of references and people, uh, people we've used for years. Uh -huh. I, in fact, I'm doing it right now for Memorial Day. Oh, right. Are you available? Yeah. All right. Yes, I'm available. Okay. That's the managing part. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, that's the manager part. Then I will, I'll pick the music, and at least a month before, I mail to these professional players okay. their parts, their, their sheet music, and any little changes, you know, that we're going to make, yeah. repeat, not repeat. So we are able to then have a two-and-a-half-hour rehearsal right before the concert and have it be professional. The students, uh, as I was saying before, they, they, are, they have the curriculum that they are going through with their teachers. So we want to synchronize with that. <laughs> so, uh, for example, on Memorial Day, we're going to have orchestra in the schools appear with us. Oh, wonderful. And so yeah. they're, they've already told me what music they're, they're studying, mm -hmm. and they're going to come and be next to us on, on the steps there of City Hall. Yeah. And I will visit them and find out their tempi, how fast they're going, okay, ma great. making yeah, sure yeah. that this is all going to work. Yeah. Rehearsals are very expensive, and so sure, it's sure. it's better for me to do all this, explore, uh, make sure we're in the same key, yeah. the, the right tempo, how many repetitions. Uh, but they're working with their teachers. I mean, I might be introduced and I might take them through it, but that isn't, it's not about me. It's about them and their teachers. And then... They'll show up at the concert. We'll run through it uh, before the public performance. Yeah. But we, there's been all this preparation. It always goes smoothly. And so um, you're going to be performing uh, Memorial Day. Do you know your schedule yet, how that goes? Yes. We're there rehearsing from 10 to 1230. The public, it's a public place. They're invited <laughs> to come by and watch the sausage being made. You know? That's a good thing for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then there's a break between from 1230. The concert's at 2. It's on the City Hall lawn in Monterey. Uh, we'll, there will be some things going on in the break after our rehearsal. Orchestra in the schools plans to have uh, approximately four stations out on the lawn where people are maybe eating their picnics. Yes. And there will be quartets and they'll, people will be invited to circulate and, and observe these student quartets. That's brand new, isn't it? That's brand new. So right. I try, you know, I, I don't know how long I could do it, but well this was <laughs> Jim Pauletti's idea actually, Orchestra Excellent. in the Schools. Wow. And uh, and then we uh, hope to have, we've had, anyway, they'll be doing that between, and then the formal concert starts at 2 o'clock. And then during the concert, some of the pieces will be just the Monterey County Pops performing. <laughs> uh, and then there'll be a couple of pieces that we'll do with them. They'll come up and stand next to us, and yeah. we'll perform with them. That's exquisite. I'm, I'm just so grateful for your whole approach and so grateful to your whole board of directors for supporting you and supporting the whole effort. It's a lot more than anybody could ever expect you to do, <laughs> but it's so consistent with what we need right now because you're filling a huge gap that still exists. We are happy to report, I think you and I, that there is more yes. music being taught in the schools today than 10 years ago, than yes. maybe even three or four years ago. But I think you see as well that there remains considerable gaps, both in terms of when students might actually have access to music education in terms of their own development, mm -hmm. also where you live, when you're there, mm -hmm. all those things are still more spotty than we like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I'm sure you agree that we, we're looking forward to the day when music is a very core subject in the curriculum, it's everywhere, 
and there will be even more students who are available, who are ready to join you and your wonderful that, group. Absolutely. I mean, our, as I said, our, it, it's a reality that, that there isn't very much live professional music in our, in our culture. Uh, and so we want to provide that. We, we want it to be professional. We, we work hard, the board works hard to get the money. Uh, we have serious professional teachers, professionally trained, professionally active uh, performers, I mean, members yeah. of the orchestra. We want to provide this to the community. But now we're adding this idea of the community participating. We have, sometimes we have adults also participate from the community. Uh, there is an adult community choir in King City when we go down there, the Tim Shell Choir. Oh, they yeah. sing a number with us. Wonderful. But, and, and that, uh, they have feelings too, you know, they want to perform. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the youth, everyone, we all feel really badly. The, many of the yeah. people in our, in the Monterey County Pops are music teachers. Yeah. Now, that's another little thing. Uh, people out there think that, you know, that old saying, you either, you either play or you teach. Well, that's not true. I mean, to get a music education degree, you have to have quite a professional level of performance. You are, you study that in college and you present exams and you give a senior recital and all this. There isn't, there aren't a lot of professional opportunities, so people become music educators and then they're active out there performing professionally in the community. So, uh, you know, we want to provide that outlet, but then have this for the community and the combination of, of us and, and community people performing with us, especially young people. Carl, thank you so, so much for being here. We just have another minute left. Is mm -hmm. there anything that you would like to tell people, make sure that they understand, whether it's about music and youth or the Monterey County Pops, whatever it is, this is, this is your minute just to say, hey. Well, I, I think as far as, you know, let's stay on music and youth. I mean, it's, it's a very valuable thing. It's just incredible that, you know, think of what they're doing. A lot of people think, oh, they play an instrument, you know, they, they play, have a good sound. But you have to, you don't get to play your music. You have to play Mozart's music, and he wrote it. He wrote it down how he wants it to happen. Yeah. So you have to be able to play that. You have to master all these things to be able to uh, play from a sheet of music and have it be the way Mozart wanted it. Yeah. And so this, it's an incredible. Uh, I think it's incredibly empowering. It's another language. It's decoding another yeah. system yeah. of symbols. Yeah bringing it to life, adding emotion to it, bringing Mozart to life, getting inside of Mozart's head, but developing the technical skills to be able to do that, the teamwork skills to play with your colleagues to make it all happen. It's an incredible thing and we need to encourage it and support it. And just one last thing, when did you know this is what you wanted to do with your life? That's, that's a good question. When I knew, you know, I've thought about that. In high school, I, you know, my mother, played the piano, her mother played also, so I had lessons. I didn't, I hated, I didn't like practicing, but then in church they needed somebody to play, and so oh, this is nice. In high school I gave a sort of an oral report about Stephen Foster in American history class, and I got up and I was doing this little presentation, and then I started singing and I sang the melodies, uh -huh. and my friends in the class, they just thought that, they'd never, how did you do that, you know, and, and I, it seemed like the most natural thing in the, if we're going to talk about Stephen Foster, I'll sing a little <laughs> bit, you know. So I guess that's when I knew that, and then a, a, a visit by the San Francisco Symphony to East Contra Costa County where I grew up yeah. to see, to be in the same room with this group of 85 people playing as this incredibly dramatic symphony. It's like a living thing, and I just remember thinking this is, I know there's 80 people down there, there are people, but they're creating this it's really alive. I remember thinking it couldn't stop. It's inconceivable that it would stop because it's it's alive. It's going somewhere, this Tchaikovsky symphony, and they're all doing it together. And, and this is something. So, I, yeah, I got the symphony bug. I want to play in a symphony. Everybody thought I was crazy. Well, I, I had to go to Mexico to do it, which is a whole other story we can talk about <laughs> sometime. I could do this interview all in Spanish thanks to my stay down there. <laughs> So uh, I guess that those were two really memorable experiences, you know, and, and hearing the San Francisco. And then, of course, I had a wonderful high school teacher who mentored me. I would go to the band room every day after school. We'd play trombone duets. He took me to uh, workshops, to competitions, you know. So. That mentoring, and you bring it all to life today for all these kids throughout the county. Thank you, Carl. Thank you for being here. Thank My you pleasure. for the energy that you bring to our corner of the world. Great. Thank, Thank you very you. much. My pleasure. Thank you.